Hello everyone, you are watching the Greek Alphabet, Pronunciation and a Brief History, Part 1. In this video, I'm going to present the Greek Alphabet to you. Because there is more than one historical way to pronounce the letters, I'm going to share three ways the letters can be pronounced. In Classical Greek, Koine Greek, and Modern Greek. I will also talk about the connection between the Greek and Phoenician alphabets. I understand that this is an important topic to those who speak modern Greek, so I've specifically prepared this video with them in mind. Introducing the alphabet and pronunciation. The Greek alphabet is believed to have been taken and modified from the Phoenician alphabet in around 750 BC or earlier. This means that the Greek alphabet has been around for more than 2,500 years and the language has been around at least that long. 2,500 years is a long time for changes in the language's grammar, words, alphabet, and pronunciation to occur. Different Greek city-states had different dialects, and the alphabets and letter characters could vary between these city-states as well. During classical times, the Attic dialect, the dialect of Attica, the state, and Athens, the city, began to be used for writing, and probably speaking, more and more in Greece. Because of its widespread use, the Attic dialect has influenced Greek greatly since Greece's classical age. Modern Greek has a 24-letter alphabet, which comes directly from the Attic alphabet. Not all of these 24 letters came into the Attic alphabet at the same time. For example, eta, xi, and omega were officially taken from the Samian alphabet, from the Greek island Samos, in 403 BC. Some ancient letters haven't been part of the Attic alphabet since classical times, though the letters are still used as numbers. Just so I'm clear, when I talk about classical Greek pronunciation, I mean Attic pronunciation. When I talk about Koine Greek pronunciation, I mean the way the commoners pronounced Greek around Jesus' time. And keep in mind, there were many different people groups who adopted Greek as their second language during this period. When I talk about modern Greek pronunciation, I mean Demotic Greek. Notes 1. The large Greek characters, or capital letters, are generally older than the small characters. So I'll mostly be comparing the large Greek characters with the Phoenician characters in this video. 2. More than one form of each Phoenician letter was used throughout history. I probably won't be presenting every form of every letter. 3. For the names of the Phoenician letters, I will be using the names given in the Unicode Character Database, version 6.1.0, copyright Unicode Incorporated, 1991 through 2010, while other people use the Hebrew names when referring to the Phoenician letters. For the pronunciation of these letters, I will be using ancient Hebrew pronunciation, or that is, ancient Hebrew pronunciation to the best of my ability. Alphabet Alpha. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced Alpha. In Koine Greek, or Biblical Greek, it was pronounced Alpha. In Modern Greek, it's still pronounced Alpha. The only difference between the letters P and Phi in Classical Greek was Phi had an aspiration after the P sound. So P was P and Phi was P. That's the only difference, and apparently, uh, the Greeks in classical times could differentiate between those two sounds. Alpha likely came from the Phoenician letter Alf. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is called Aleph. Alpha and Alf are both the first letters in the respective alphabets. Both letters have similar sounding names. Elf looks somewhat similar to both the large and small alpha. To form the large alpha, the elf could have been flipped and, depending on which form of the elf was used, the vertical line moved. When we look at one form of elf, we can see a small alpha within the letter. This doesn't mean the small alpha came directly from elf too, 
I just wanted to point out the similarity between them. Beta. In classical Greek, it was pronounced beta. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced veta. In modern Greek, it's pronounced vita. Now again, for those who speak Greek, you will notice that eta was pronounced in classical Greek just like epsilon. The only difference between eta and epsilon is eta is a long vowel, and so it's held twice as long, and epsilon is short. So it's beta versus beta. That's the only difference. Beta likely came from the Phoenician letter bait. Beta and bait are both the second letters in their respective alphabets. It seems like both letters sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making a B sound. The tail of bait was probably curved back into the letter, and the letter reversed to form Greek's beta. Gamma. In classical Greek, it was pronounced gamma. In Koine and modern Greek, it's pronounced gamma. Now, I want to point out that because there's two consonants side by side, then you would held uh, the sound m twice as long, so gamma, compared to gamma. Gamma probably came from the Phoenician letter gamma. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is called gimel. Gamma and gamel are both the third letters in their respective alphabets. It seems like these two letters sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making the G sound. For the form of gamel that looks something like an upwards pointing arrow, it may have been made into a right angle, turned about 90 degrees clockwise, and the direction of the letter reversed to form the Greek gamma. For the gamel that looks more like an I, with a hook at the top, the top may have been stretched out to form a right angle, and then the direction of the letter reversed to form gamma. Delta. In classical Greek, it was pronounced delta. In Koine and modern Greek, it's pronounced delta. Delta likely came from the Phoenician letter delt. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is called Daleth. Delta and Delt are both the fourth letters in their respective alphabets. It seems like they sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a D sound. For the Delt in the form of a triangle with a tail, the tail of the letter may have been cut off, and the letter enlarged and moved to a lower plane to form the Greek Delta. For the delta in the form of a triangle without a tail, the letter may have only needed to turn counterclockwise slightly, if at all, and the peak to shift about halfway to the left to form delta. Epsilon. In classical Greek, it was pronounced epsilon, just like in Koine Greek. In modern Greek, it's pronounced epsilon, without the second accent. Now, in classical Greek, and I believe in Koine Greek too, I'm pretty sure, it was actually spelled as two separate words. In modern Greek, they've taken those two words, they turned it into one word, and only the first accent remains. This letter means something like, without aspiration. The Greek character for epsilon, not the name or sound of the letter, likely came from the Phoenician letter He. Epsilon and He are both the fifth letters in their respective alphabets. These letters didn't sound anything alike in Classical Greek and Phoenician. For the form of He which had a tail at the bottom, the tail might have been cut off and the letter turned 35 degrees clockwise and then reversed to form the Greek character Epsilon. For the hay without much of a tail, the letter might have simply been reversed, or rotated and then reversed, to form epsilon. Zeta. In classical Greek, it was pronounced something like zdeta. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced zeta. In modern Greek, it's pronounced zeta.
Now, the classical Greek pronunciation of the letter zeta was an SD sound, so zd or sd, which basically sounds like a ZD sound when you combine the letters together. In Koine Greek, it was a DZ sound, so the letters reversed. Zeta probably came from the Phoenician letter Zai. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is called Zion. Zeta is the sixth letter in the Greek alphabet, and Zai is the seventh letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making some form of a Z sound in Phoenician. The form of Zai that looks like a wave might have been turned about 60 degrees clockwise and moved to a lower plane to form the Greek Zeta. The form of Zai that looks like a capital I might have had the vertical line in the middle slanted between the upper and lower lines to form Zeta. We will get back to the Greek alphabet right after this. The Bible study section of Dinogolus.com has Bible-related articles, equations, and more. To get to Dinogolus.com, simply type go-dine.com into your address bar and press enter, or click the link in the description box below. Eta. In classical Greek, it was pronounced eta. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced eta. In modern Greek, it's pronounced eta. Now again, eta is, in classical Greek, pronounced just like epsilon, except that it was held twice as long. So it's eta, eta. In modern Greek, which if you ask a Greek, they will tell you it's pronounced eta. Eta likely came from the Phoenician letter chet. Eta is the seventh letter in the Greek alphabet, and chet is the eighth letter in the Phoenician alphabet. There is somewhat of a similarity between eta and chet, but they made different sounds. It looks like the Greeks may have dropped the h or ch sound when they adopted the letter, and maybe changed the a sound, if that's how the Phoenicians pronounced it, to an e sound. For the slanted form of chet, which had two lines running along its side that curved at the ends, it may have been turned upright, the arm and leg mirrored on the opposite sides, and the top and bottom horizontal lines removed to form the Greek eta. For the chet that looks more like two crates falling over, the letter might have been turned about 40 degrees clockwise, and the upper and lower horizontal lines removed from the letter to form eta. Theta. In classical Greek, it was pronounced teta. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced theta. In modern Greek, it's pronounced theta. Now, just like the letters p and phi in classical Greek, the letters tau or tav and theta both make a t sound. But the difference is, is tau in classical Greek made t with no aspiration, theta made t with an aspiration. Now, it's very difficult for me to differentiate between uh, a tau in classical Greek pronunciation and a theta in classical Greek pronunciation, but apparently the Greeks were able to tell the difference. Theta probably came from the Phoenician letter tate. Theta is the eighth letter in the Greek alphabet, and Tate is the ninth letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making a T sound. The vertical line in the middle of Tate was probably removed, forming the Greek letter Theta. Yoda. In classical Greek, it is pronounced Eota. In Koine and modern Greek is pronounced iota. Now in classical Greek, iota made two sounds. If it was short, it made an i sound. If it was long, it made an e sound. Uh, a little bit more like maybe Latin and English than modern Greek is. 
because in modern Greek it always makes an E sound. Yoda probably came from the Phoenician letter Yod, or, in my opinion, perhaps Yod and Zai. Yoda sounds like it came from Yod, and it looks like it could have come from either Yod or one of the forms of Zai. Yoda is the ninth letter in the Greek alphabet. Yod is the tenth letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Zai is the seventh letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters Yoda and Yod sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician. The Greeks probably changed the Y sound into an I sound, like they do with certain Hebrew names. When we compare Yod with Yot, we can hear how the Y and I sounds are very similar, and can easily be confused when one sound is foreign to us. For the Yod that looks like a comb, it might have been turned about 80 degrees clockwise, the top line stretched out to match the bottom line, the line coming out of the middle removed, the curved vertical line straightened, and the letter moved to a lower plane to form the Greek Yota. For the Yod that resembles a backwards F, the middle arm might have been removed, the top and bottom lines extended similarly on the opposite sides, and the curved vertical line straightened to form Yota. Another possibility, I think, is that the form of Zai that looks like an I may have simply been used by the Greeks for Iota. Kappa. In classical Greek, it was pronounced Kappa, just like in Koine and modern Greek. Kappa probably came from the Phoenician letter Kaf, or perhaps Kaf and Elf. Kappa sounds like it might have come from Kaf, and it looks like it could have come from Kaf, or some form of Elf. Kappa is the tenth letter in the Greek alphabet. Kaf is the eleventh letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Elf is the first letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters Kappa and Kaf sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a K sound. For the Kaf that somewhat resembles a Y, the letter might have been turned about 165 degrees clockwise, the bowl shape at the bottom moved up to the middle, the bowl shape rotated about 80 degrees counterclockwise, and the back of the bowl pinched into a point to form the Greek kappa. For the kappa that looked like a wide V with a prong in the middle, the letter might have been turned about 35 degrees clockwise, the vertical line lengthened downwards, and the middle lines turned about 35 degrees to form kappa. Another possibility, I think, is that the elf may have been changed to form the Greek letter kappa. Or, one of the forms of elf that looks like a K might have simply been used for kappa. Lambda. In classical Greek, it was pronounced lambda. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced lambda. In modern Greek, it's pronounced lambda. The only difference between Koine and Modern Greek is that in Modern Greek there is no beta in the word lambda. Now I want to point out, in Classical Greek, because the beta made a b sound and the delta made a d sound, then it was lambda. In Koine Greek, as I said, the beta made a v sound, just like in Modern Greek, so it was lambda. When someone in Koine Greek were to pronounce it, you almost can't even hear the beta in the word which is probably why the Greeks uh, sometime after Koine time period removed the beta completely from the word and only left the delta. Lambda probably came from the Phoenician letter lambda, or maybe from lambda and gamel. The corresponding letter to lambda in Hebrew is called lamed. Lambda sounds like it came from lambda, and it looks like it could have come from lambda or one of the forms of gamel. Lambda is the eleventh letter in the Greek alphabet. Lambda is the twelfth letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Gamal is the third letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters Lambda and Lambda sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making an L sound. If the character came from Lambda, the letter may have been turned about 125 degrees clockwise, 
the small arm at the top cut off if the form that was copied originally had a tail, the long line cut short and the other lengthened, and the letter moved to a lower plane to form the Greek lambda. Another possibility, I think, is that one of the forms of gamo could have simply been used for the letter lambda. Mu. In classical Greek, I believe it was pronounced something like mu. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it was something close to mu or mu exactly. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced mu. In modern Greek, it's pronounced mi. Mu likely came from the Phoenician letter mame, or maybe mame and sheen. Mu sounds like it came from mame, and it looks similar to both mame and sheen. Mu is the twelfth letter in the Greek alphabet. Mame is the thirteenth letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and sheen is the twenty-first letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters mu and mame sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making an M sound. For the form of mame that somewhat resembles a pitchfork, the long tail might have been mirrored on the other side, the bowl shape at the top pulled down into an arrow, the vertical line running up the middle of the arrow removed, both legs shortened, and the letter moved to a lower plane to form the Greek mu. For the mame which looks more like a lightning bolt, it may have been turned about 90 degrees clockwise, had its tail, the last bend on the left, cut off, the leg on the left bent inwards, the two legs lengthened, and the letter moved to a higher plane to form mu. Another possibility, I think, is that the sheen that somewhat resembles a W may have been turned 180 degrees clockwise and moved to a lower plane to form mu. Nu. In classical Greek, I believe it was pronounced something like nu. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced nu. In modern Greek, it's pronounced ni. Nu probably came from the Phoenician letter nun. Nu is the 13th letter in the Greek alphabet, and nun is the 14th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters nu and nun sounded similar in classical Greek and Phoenician, making an N sound. Nun was probably turned slightly counterclockwise. The leg on the right shortened, the bend on the left moved down, the letter moved to a lower plane, the letter enlarged, and the letter reversed to form the Greek letter nu. All right, that's the end of this video. We will go through the rest of the alphabet in part two, which I will link to in the description box below when it's published. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing? And if you have time, come and check out my website, which is also linked to in the description box below, and tell me what you think. Thank you for watching, everyone.